Okay, so now that we have our expressions for phi, our field, and its conjugate momentum field, in terms of the uh, raising and lowering operators, or creation and annihilation operators, we need to find the Hamiltonian for our Klein-Gordon system here. So we've already found, you know, when we were working with the classical Klein-Gordon uh, Lagrangian, that Hamiltonian. So it's this, and we basically just need to calculate all these expressions and plug them in, and uh, yeah, that'll give us h. So uh, to do that, I just write out what each of these three things are. So again, just note that when you multiply to when you have you know, squared like this, and we're multiplying two things, and they, you know, they're fine to have integrals in them. These, these, uh, the integral variables are dummy variables, so we don't want to repeat them. So I basically, in my pi here, I have just this expression here with p, but then when I multiply, I multiply by <clears throat> the same thing, but this time I'm integrating over q. And I do that with all three of these terms. So uh, gradient of phi here, I'll, the only term that depends on x is e to the i, or the e to the i x terms. So like in this term, we'll get an i p. This term, we'll get a minus i p. I can factor that out. So this term will end up with a minus sign. So that's how that works out. And then again, same thing for this term, just with q instead of p. So um, let's just focus on the pi squared for now. We can do each term individually. So, uh, so we can uh, take everything, just like we did last time, take all of this integral and all these constants and move them out to the move them out to the front. So we will have this. And then we can just FOIL this. So, you know, we'll get four terms here. And so we'll end up with uh, this expression. <clears throat> so then what we can do is, uh, let's just calculate this term in the Hamiltonian. So calculate the integral of pi squared over all space, which I'll just call h, h pi here. And the reason I want to do that is because if we look at these terms here, we get these exponentials. Uh, and if we integrate this over x, over all space, that is, we uh, can identify this these terms, each of these exponentials, as um, when, you know, when you integrate it over dx, d, d cubed x, that's a delta function. So this will give us a delta p plus q, and this will give us a delta p minus q, delta p minus q, p minus q, delta p plus q. So we can just, um, yeah, so we can just do that integral over all space and that will just give us, reduce this expression to this. So already things are looking much nicer. And so now that we have this delta function here, each of these terms, we can do the integral over q and just replace, um, so in this term, we'd replace q with minus p and same for the last term. In, this ter in these terms, we'd replace q with just p. So I do that for each of the terms. And then, uh, so technically speaking, I should have, I should put these WQs and Ps in with each of these terms, because sometimes you get a minus P, sometimes you get a P, but uh, W minus P is the same as WP, because W is square root of P squared plus M squared. So we can leave it out and just replace WQ with WP. And so that will give us a net of just WP. 
And so this is our expression. And what we can do with this is we can get rid of these terms that have an AP and an A minus P, or an AP dagger, an A minus P dagger, and just leave us with these terms. So this minus will cancel with these two minuses, which is just left with this. Uh, so the reason you can get throw away these terms, I can show you up here. Basically, we're doing this kind of integral. And so we're integrating over all, so for, from px goes from negative infinity to infinity, py goes from negative infinity to infinity, same for pz. So I can split this up and do the integral over the negative, you know, from negative infinity of all three p's to zero and then from zero to infinity. And um, then I can, in this integral, uh, change my integration variable from p to minus p. And if I do that, so uh, this will become uh, infinity instead of minus infinity. And if wp stays the same, our uh, volume element stays the same, and these p's just exchange. So I get this. And then I can just exchange the limits of integration here. And so I pick up this minus sign, but then clearly this term is minus this term, so they sum to zero. So I can throw away the terms that are like this, which is what I've done. So I'm just left, so h pi will just be this. So uh, the other, you know, two terms that I'll call h phi and h gradient phi, they work out in pretty much the same way. In fact, you could kind of just read off what they would be. You don't even have to do all the math. You can just read off what they should be. So phi, for example, you know, this, we, we just saw that um, this term will have an e to the i p plus q dot x, but that will lead to a, you know, replacing q with minus p, and then those terms go away anyway, uh, which I just showed. So we only have to worry about uh, the cross terms, so this times this term, and this times this term. And so, and, uh, the, and then the prefactor out in front will be different. So that's why we have that difference. Um, so then we, we just need to add all of these terms together to get our total Hamiltonian. And we can notice that if we sum these two terms they're this, exactly the same. Only here I have an m squared and here I have a p squared. So if I sum them, we'll just get an m squared plus p squared over 2 omega p. But m squared plus p squared is omega p squared. So that will cancel with one of the omega p's. And it will just leave me with an omega p over 2. So basically, this term plus this term is equal to uh, this term. So I'll have a total of just omega p times this. But then we have our one half from the beginning. I haven't uh, taken that into account yet. So in the end, our uh, total Hamiltonian will be this. So okay, um, that's that was a lot of words. So um, but yeah, that's how it works out. And uh, we'll do more with this in the next video.